Howdy Heroes, Darth. this is Kyle Ferguson sitting down today with Simplicity Lutano, who is going to be teaching us about Genji. Lutano, why Genji in this particular game? You were last pick too. Um, so Genji really uh, fulfills a role that we needed in this team, and uh, it was the hyper carry. Um, uh, Silva, Silva and Diva were kind of covering our wave clear, and um, Genji, uh, Genji needed to put out the big damage, you know, make the plays happen. So uh, that's why we drafted him here. So, as a as a Storm League player, my opinion of hyper carry or at least damage Genji is a little confused. So, is it that he deals damage directly to he who he intends to kill, and that's why the number might not be Storm League rocking? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, he, uh, he can get in and get the kill and leave. So, uh, in, in that sense, in competitive, it's, it's very different. In, in tier league, you need to be doing all the damage that you possibly can, uh, because your team just won't do it. But in competitive, it, it's quite different. Uh, your teammates will be doing damage with you, and you just need to get in and confirm the kill with them. You picked a Tracer in another game that was a pretty similar situation. Did you decide for the Genji over the Tracer here? Uh, yeah, we were considering Tracer here, but uh, the Genji is just more powerful because of the Brightwing Bomb setup. Um, Gen er, Tracer isn't as good flanking as Genji is. Uh, she's more of like a, a front to back hero and then she blinks in, but Genji's really good at holding those anchors, uh, dismounting when he needs to, and then just playing out of vision and eating in to get that big Dragon Blade up Brightwing Bomb combo that we were looking for. So. Was this informed by the early pick, Chromie, that you were going to be going more in the back than, say, your Thrall and your Maevs you play? Absolutely, yeah. The, this draft is entirely focused around countering the Chromie. Um, it's it's one of the strongest picks in the meta right now, so uh, if, you, if you're going to let it through in the draft, you have to have a plan to beat it. So tell me about your level one pick. Right now you're doing a little, you know, soaking, but, you know, it's Genji soaking. Other people are helping out. A swift <laughs> as the wind, movement speed. So uh, Swift as the Wind, it's incredibly powerful to reposition in flights, which was very necessary in this game. Um, uh, you need to position that Brightwing Bomb really effectively. You need to use it to split the enemy. Uh, and uh, in order to do that, you need the movement speed to really get in position because they have the Lucio as well, you know? So, and he gives the team movement speed, so you really need to be able to uh, be exactly where you need to be. So that, that was the pick for that. Is there any other reasons you would go with the other picks or are you a swift as the wind main um there is a couple builds which you can run that are uh, independent of swift as the wind but i'd say 90 percent of the time i take swift as the wind you can take a cyber uh, the, the dismount talent the d at one with the that lowers your cooldown and um, you use that to just reposition and poke constantly in fights but uh, that really wasn't what we were going for here we were just going for a full burst build so that uh, that worked out for us pretty well there was a little bit of a uh, linger there, maybe some thought going on for level four. What were you debating between? Uh, I was debating between Strike of the Heart or Shuriken Mastery here. Um, and I was, the reason I was debating is because I wasn't sure what I was going to go on 13, either E resets or um, the Shin Gun here. Uh, Shin Gun gives you uh, so much more burst than your E at 13, but your E at 13 gives you um, just a, a lot more ease. But in these fights, I wasn't really needing more ease. I just needed the one E to get into the fight and use my Dragon Blade. And, and if I get resets or not, it's not really a big deal. The D Blade will do most of the work. So I was I was debating on that. And I, I opted for the Shuriken Mastery because it also gives you a, a lot more power out of D Blade. And we were kind of struggling in the early game. so. Uh, yeah, I just took Shuriken Mastery for a bit of a uh, more powerful early game. That makes sense. And getting back there and also uh, now we're fun two charges of Shuriken. Okay, so so that would explain later on why you might be, to an onlooker like myself, jumping semi-randomly. Yeah. I was like, well, uh, what's, these, what's, the, what's the little jumps about? I guess he has it on cooldown, no problem. But that, this is actually giving you more Shurikens. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, how do you... You got a Brightwing here, and you're Genji with no way to really heal yourself. Of course, you got Deflect and stuff like that to absorb the big moments. In Storm League, a Genji like this would be pretty uh, rough with very little heal and take care of it. Are you playing differently based on your support? So here's the thing. I actually have two supports in this game. Um, my first support, obviously, Brightwing, but my second support is Tyrael. Uh, Tyrael gives me massive HP shields with his W and his level 1 talent, and uh, the Sanctification also gives me a, a huge defensive that I can use. So uh, it's not as scary uh, post-10 in fights. Um, 
in the early game, yes, it is very scary. Um, he's not as powerful as he could be as a, as a, obviously second support or a stronger support to heal. But uh, a lot of the early game was just us surviving, waiting for our 10, biding our time. Okay, so because Tyrael gives flat point shields and Genji's health is low, those feel really big and empower you to get a lot more done. Exactly. Oh, that makes sense. And then I, I think we got a, yeah, we got a bright wing teleport here, which is also not based on max health. So you're just getting more max health sitting on top of you with those shields and letting you do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Level seven here, you went with augmented guard, which gives you, gives you another shield. <laughs> so I'm, I'm noticing a through line. <laughs> yeah, level seven, this talent is uh, just incredibly powerful when you're against the Chromie. Because all of her setup is uh, very telegraphed. Uh, she'll drop her sands or she'll throw a Q and that charge up is very obvious. Her W has a massive animation that you can predict. And I think you'll see at one point in this game, she just throws full combo at me. I press W under Ford and uh, I just get a almost 1500 HP shield from her combo. That makes sense. So this, again, is a reaction to the type of damage you're receiving. Even that things like Grey Main that would be in these bursted moments rather than maybe like fighting a Tracer or a Zarya mm -hmm. that would maybe push you towards perfect defense. Absolutely, yes. So you're forced to do a little bit of Hearthen. Is there anything right now in the comms and the ways you guys are playing that is changing or is it just that mad dash for 10 and the big bomb combo you set up? <laughs> so at this point, we're like, we're kind of getting bodied, guys. We need to we need to slow this game down, get our 10s. Um, we, were, we were hard scaling this game, as Kier would say. Um, we uh, pretty much were just saying, hey, guys, we got to stop the bleeding right now because uh, we've lost the whole forward. I think we've barely gotten a wall on them. Um, but a lot of our early game, this game was just planning on uh, hard scaling. You know, we, we get our tens and then we can start playing fights really effectively because before then they're much more powerful than we are. Is there is it hard to get the team to do that as Genji since you got to get in there and farm your mastery and you're always kind of being busy? The team might be getting a little excited seeing Genji in there. Well, luckily I, I'm really mobile, so um, I can I can do whatever I want and just say, team, hey, I'm I'm denying their rotation here. Hey, I'm dismounting. Hey, I'm just going for some quick stacks. Um, and they they trust me. They know that I'm not going to die randomly. Um, so they're like, okay, you do your thing, and we'll uh, we'll just catch waves, you know. And that's that was pretty much our game plan, and we were just we were just hard scaling. So here we see the Dragon Blade come online. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there outside of the Bright Wing a situation where you would use this otherwise, or is this all team play all the time right now? Uh, I think a lot of the times when you're going to be picking Genji, you're going to be wanting to go Dragon Blade. Um, there's some specific scenarios where X Strike is very powerful. Uh, when Genji isn't the hyper carry, the focus of the composition, you can go X Strike. He's more of a, a secondary poke or follow up. Uh, X-Strike can be very powerful, or if you just need the X-Strikes to survive. Like, uh, for example, against the Tracer, X-Strike, you can just invuln her bomb if she bombs you. So you can just go on her really hard, use your deflect early, catch some of her auto attacks to do a lot of damage to her, and if she bombs you, you don't care. You can just X-Strike out. Interesting. So you sort of cease to exist as a model when you X-Strike, therefore dropping any effects on you. Exactly. Okay, nice. And uh, by the look of the enemy team, anything to stop your dragon blade would be along the lines of a Johanna shield? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you'll, you'll see in one of these fights, I actually uh, use medallion and uh, completely ignore the Johanna shield, and I go in really hard with the D-blade, and we, we turn the fight. I noticed that you're kind of filling in this ward and anchor role. You're you're in a lot of the bushes, you're around. Are you just looking for ankle angles and stuff, or are you actually helping the rest of the team pick out these fights? So here's how this this uh, this fight works. So the bottom shrine, the enemy team has to really overextend to get in there. And as you can see, I, I play out of vision so that the enemy team doesn't know where I am, doesn't know where the Brightwing bomb is gonna come from. And then they see this Brightwing zing and they're like, oh, we have to run away. But they're like, we don't know where we have to run to because we don't have vision on the Genji. And that's why this combo is so effective. That sanctification did so much, but it, we didn't stay in it for the whole duration. Mm -hmm. So that, that sank wasn't really to stop damage. It was to stop CC. Um, uh, we use the sank so that we don't get blessed off our full combo. Um, and we use a massive emerald afterwards and, uh, and, uh, and a huge wailing arrow. It was like a four-man wailing arrow, four-man brightwing bomb, and a huge sank. 
it, it just allows us to get our full combo off. And as you can see, by the time the Sank was over, we had already won the fight. It's almost that's like exactly it, how you want to use Sank. Yeah, it gives you a zone that you can advance so right through. Here, augment and deflect. 1600 shield. And you can do that at any point, really, when you see the Chromie charging up. That's incredible. And also, now that you've got the Shuriken Mastery done, you're actually hitting buildings pretty hard. Oh, yeah. Uh, it gives us a lot more macro threat. So uh, one of the problems with a composition like this is we don't have a lot of building damage. Genji is notoriously weak for, for uh, structure damage. And this build specifically allows him to do a lot of damage with that Shuriken Mastery and the Shin Guns. That double hearth by you and Tyrio, I, I guess this is a very mana dependent team then? Absolutely. Uh, we wanted to be ready for this objective spawn. It was okay if we lost this camp. Uh, I'm not sure if we even do. I think we still get it. But uh, we really just wanted to be ready for these shrines and be in position for the next uh, fight. So. And now, are you hunting or hoping to pick somebody off as they walk? I was just uh, ensuring that we secure this top fort, so we weren't sure where they were at the time. Ooh, Hosty gets caught here. That was really unfortunate. Um, but we, we had a nice re-engage. We knew they used all their, their abilities here, so uh, we said, hey, we can still win this fight, even though it's 4v5, and we looked for it, and we actually win. Um, but yeah, a, a lot of times when you're playing Genji in those rotations, you need to um, you need to be scouting. Uh, as we said before, you don't do a lot of structure damage. Um, but you're really good at just making sure that the enemies can't get onto your team because you're just constantly dismounting. And all you have to be aware of is the Joanna Bluss. So, uh, it's, it's, uh, as long as you're paying attention to that cooldown, you can uh, use your E and uh, you can bait the Bluss out even because your E is so fast. How much of Genji's damage is really coming from some of his other sources like auto attacks? Do you even worry about those or those in an incidental? It, uh, it depends on the fight. A lot of times you want to just triple shuriken to get that shingen burst after your e um but uh, getting these auto attacks are very powerful um, i think at this point in the game they're what 80 damage per those three auto attacks so it's 240 damage every time you auto and that's that'll that'll stack up fast it does uh, a lot of damage actually so if you can get those autos in you should really be looking for them Right now, <laughs> it looks like you and Tyrion are getting set up. This is, <laughs> I mean, I just love Holy Ground. So this this is a fabulous moment. So yeah, we absolutely knew they were on this camp and we're saying, hey, we just Holy Ground, steal the camp and then walk out. And we actually managed to get dropped the beat, which is really important for uh, any other fight that we decide to take. We still have our Dragon Blade in 15 and our Emeralds and our Sanction coming up shortly. So that was a perfect uh, take for us. We take the camp, walk out, get Sound Barrier. And uh, we were very happy with that play. Tell me a little bit about, you got the Shin Gun now, which is those three hitting the same target, increasing that burst damage, perfect for the pickups. We talked about that earlier with the Shuriken Mastery. Final Cut though, what is that succeeding in? Well, Final Cut is just a consistent source of damage. Um, unfortunately, Steady Blade has been nerfed uh, one too many times in that you need, you need to actually hit three people with the Steady Blade proc to, uh, that is the Medallion Cleanse on the Joanna ult. Um, you need to, hit three people with the steady blade proc to make it more value than final cut which is really difficult to do in the first place so uh, a lot of times final cut is the only pick on this tier uh, the reflect damage is inconsistent uh, steady blade as well inconsistent final cut you just know what's going to happen you know it's going to go off and uh, you just pick it because it's just the best pick that's most consistent so there wouldn't be much reason in this current iteration of genji to pick the other two absolutely when you're dragon blading, you're doing this little dance where you, you kind of do a swipe, then readjust, and then get in that position for another swipe that'll carry you slightly forward. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the thing about Dragon Blade is that it doesn't come out all at once. So the swipe is a uh, right to left or left to right. Um, and if you try to swipe, you know you have you do that little dash forward. And if they're too far to one side, you can actually dash through them and not even hit the dragon swipe. So you always have to reposition yourself after each swipe that you use so that you can get the most damage and not miss a swipe, which can just make you miss a kill. And you're kind of stuck in a, a sort of dragon blade trance or form, right? You can't auto attack. Uh, can you use your other abilities without canceling dragon blade? So the, you can, the only ability you can't use is shurikens during Dragon Blade. You okay. can use Deflect, you can use E, you can use D. Um, and that's really all you need when you're Dragon Blading. Uh, you wouldn't want to use the shurikens in the first place. You know, you want to get those swipes out. So 
Uh, you still have all your defensive and all your mobility up, and, uh, and the Dragon Blade just does so much damage that, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, just very powerful. And, uh... Right now, diving for 20 by the look of it, they're pushed out, you got an avenue to victory in the bottom. You've definitely gotten that late game advantage you were looking for. What are your thoughts on 20, since it's a pretty big level? Uh, infinite Dragon Blade, every time. Um... If you've made it to 20 with Infinite Dragon Blade and you haven't been getting countered in the fights, you've pretty much won the game. Uh, unless you get blow, blown up by Bless, you'll see that Infinite Dragon Blade just gets far too much value for them to deal with. It, uh, it gives you resets on your E, which uh, is just so powerful. You don't even have to hit your E anymore. And uh, you just can do so much work, especially with a composition designed around the Dragon Blade getting value. So you're increasing its own duration and that Swift Strike resets on, on a kill. So you're just using it basically for mobility now to reposition for the next Dragon Blade. Absolutely, yeah. Is there any chance, I mean, you did, you know, you got a couple of uh, Shuriken talents. Any chance you would ever go Sharpen Stars? No, it's, it's, I think it's kind of a bait talent. Um, piercing is okay, but uh, a lot of times, all you want to hit with those shurikens is your first target. And as the shurikens spread out, they're much less likely to hit the same target, which is a lot of the damage and the burst from shurikens. Uh, a good Genji will always just be positioning right on top of someone and then using those shurikens to burst all three of them on the same target. And pierce uh, after you pierce that first target, they spread out. They're just not as effective. So it's just not worth taking. Tell me about this position here. You got Yurel, you know she's in the bottom. She's got to keep clearing that lane. There's possibly a 4v4 happening and it's just waiting to see if Brightwing can teleport in on you for an Emerald Wind, divide them up. Absolutely. Uh, we're just looking to say, hey, can we can we get an ult? Um, can we can we do anything here? Uh, also, right here, we're clearing out this catapult, uh, which really gives us a lot of pressure on their core because this temple is spawning in mid. And is your target still the chromie mainly at this point or has it changed so at this point uh our comms have shifted a bit we're saying hey the gray main is is a lot easier for us to kill in these fights but uh for the most part our target is whichever target is split by the uh sound barrier so in this game all i have to do in fights is press my e in between the gray main and the chromie to ensure that the emerald run splits the two carries and then lucio has to choose the sound barrier one hero or the other and whichever one he doesn't sound barrier, as you can see here, he sound barriers the Chromie. We just swap directly to the Gray Main and kill him instead. Wow. So yeah, that is a pretty quick decision. Plus Chromie now has that timeout that's gonna cause you difficulty. I love how you're just sticking to Johanna this whole game too. Every time she's out of that skin, continuing to to pressure her. Is there a, is there a trick to it? Like there's, you know, Light Bomb and uh, Heavenly Sword Johanna kind of business. Is there a good way for people who wanna pull off this Genji Brightwing combo to know when Brightwing's gonna land on you? Um, the You can actually see the, the Brightwing uh, time on her Z, but I think really all you have to say is, hey, Z me. And um, you, you definitely need to be in comms for one. So be in comms with whoever you want to play with and then say, hey, uh, I'm looking for a flank. They don't see me. Call for the Z. And then it's about two seconds, I believe, on the Brightwing Z before she drops. So the second you start getting that Z, start looking aggressively and press that E before you know it's going to drop. There's also a sound effect where it's like, da -da -da -da, and then it's charging up. Um, the sparkles and start really... raining down. Yeah. And so you're going to use either your agility or your swift strike to get into that position. Absolutely. Yeah. And now with this build, do you favor the swift strike over it since you're gonna be getting resets and that sort of thing mm -hmm. uh yeah so you just uh you swift strike in and post 20 it doesn't even matter if you hit your e uh, ideally you hit your e every time because it's just more damage you know um but the most important thing with the brightwing bomb is getting into a correct position to split the enemy team um so a lot of times you'll see in these fights my e doesn't even hit a hero but i get a very nice split on the opponent which is what you're looking for You've got the top damage in the game right now. Zero deaths. I mean, it's looking awesome for you guys. Do you think Genji can exist outside this combo? With I mean, you got a lot taken care of you. The Tyrael, the Brightwing. Uh, I think, as I said uh, before, earlier in the video, the uh, the X-Strike Genji can function pretty well. Um, even though if he doesn't have too much support, he's very independent. He's very mobile. He doesn't need a ton of healing as long as he's not playing for D-Blade, staying in the fight the entire time. He's just E, get some shurikens down, press your X-Strike, 
and then hopefully the guy's dead, and then you just walk away with D and deflect. Um, and in that scenario, again, you can be very effective, yes. There, you continue to ward. Tyrion headed out to clear the lane, and that's because you're the one initiating these fights, not the tank now. Exactly. So uh, here, I'm just looking for a, a huge flank angle. So I know the temples are spawning on top mid, and if I can get a good flank on their back line here, which I managed to succeed and, and find, um, then I can just win us the fight. And so we look here, we split the Chromie and the Grey Maid. The beat drop comes down, we hit a huge sank, and we just start slicing. How do you uh, know where you are? <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I actually use a space bar in fights, and that gives me a big, big uh, blue light on me. So uh, there's a there's a setting in uh, in Hots where if you're holding down space bar, you have a big blue light on yourself, and it also centers your camera on your character. So uh, it'll it'll be really useful if you're using that in fights. So you're basically temporarily using the space bar, holding it down, playing with locked camera during those moments. Exactly, exactly. That seems very helpful. Uh, I, I had no idea where you were in that last fight, but clearly everybody was dying horribly. <laughs> yeah. As the game ends here, any other advice for hopeful Genjis out there? Um, I'd say focus on hitting your E-Shuriken combo. Um, you can go into try mode, just E on to the Arthas, and just press your Shurikens, and try to hit every every Shuriken that you can hit. And that's just going to be a lot of your damage in the early game. And then post-10, getting that Dragon Blade down and really focusing on slashing, walking back, and slashing forward again. And that'll let you land a lot more consistent damage. Awesome. Thank you for the breakdown of this game. Good luck to Simplicity and yourself and the rest of the tournament for the CCL. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, ring that bell here at Heroes Hearth for more educational content for Heroes of the Storm. Be sure to follow on Instagram as well, and we'll see you next week with a new video from the CCL.